Hello, and welcome to SR Experts Tech Talks. My name is Mike Mangino, and I work for Nokia's Network Infrastructure Division. We're here to talk technology today with our experts. And as usual, if you have any questions after the talk, feel free to reach out to your Nokia representative. Uh, my name is Rudy Hubeke, and I run product management for our IP business at Nokia. I want to talk about the extensions we are doing to our 5G mobile transport solution and the introduction of a new family of front hall routers. And I want to highlight the work we've been doing across IP and optical groups to deliver 400 gig optimized transport solutions. So let's jump in. 5G deployments are clearly picking up pace. To date, nearly 150 commercial 5G networks have been deployed around the world. And with that, 5G is actually growing faster than any of the previous generation wireless technologies. The introduction of 5G has a massive impact on the network, end-to-end, -end, that goes far beyond the 5G RAN and the 5G core elements. 5G drives a refresh of the mobile transport network to deal with the 10x increase in capacity that is needed. 5G networks are also being prepared for a better user experience by allowing applications to be run closer to the end user, closer to the cell site in regional and edge cloud locations. And finally, 5G will enable advanced use cases such as network slicing to support different tenants on the network with isolation and SLA guarantees. So from an IP networking perspective, building those mobile anyhole networks and enabling that dynamic cloud interconnect with network slicing and automation are the main areas of focus for us and investment. And that has resulted in a significant amount of new developments in the past year with more to come in the next 12 months. Let's first take a look at the evolution of our 5G backhaul portfolio. And this is where we are positioning the 7250IXR portfolio, a merchant silicon based product family that nicely complements our FP4 and now FP5 based systems. Uh, and that has been optimized for 5G transport. Uh, I'm happy to say that at the moment, the 7250 family is already powering the largest 5G deployments around the globe. We've been extending that portfolio at both ends of the spectrum. Our deployment experience to date has shown that there was a need for a lower capacity, a cost optimized, a power optimized 5G DRON cell site router that could complement the current IXRE big and IXRE small platforms which are 300 and 120 gig respectively for those smaller capacity 5G sites. That has now been addressed by the introduction of the IXR EC, a 64 gig a compact 5G cell site rider that we're now uh, shipping. And then on the other side of the spectrum, uh, as we enter into this 400 gig transport era, there is also the emerging need to scale up uh, at high density aggregation sites and in those 5G edge locations. Those aggregation sites are typically served with our redundant and modular platforms, the IXRR4, the IXRR6. Well, early next year, we are extending this with redundant and modular higher capacity IXRR6D and DL platforms, 2.4 tera of capacity, uh, offering much denser 10 gig, 25 gig, and 100 gig access with 400 gig uplink capabilities, including support for those 400 gig coherent ZRZR plus optics and even 400 gig CFP2 DCO coherent options. We're also extending our family of carrier one rack unit leaf platforms that are frequently used in those 5G edge locations. Our currently shipping platforms, which are the IXRS and XS and X1, they are optimized for 10 gig, 25, 50, and 100 gig access respectively. Also here, we are adding a 400 gig optimized platform with the IXR X3, one rack unit system providing 36 ports of 400 gig QSF PDD. So with those extensions, I believe we provide the tools for the next phase of 5G backhaul deployments with a more efficient cell side option, of course, and increased capacity and 400 gig transport options in aggregation and edge locations. Now, to support the initial 5G commercial launches, the focus in the transport network has been on greater capacity. But of course, as 5G is now maturing very quickly into new phases of advanced use cases like network slicing and edge cloud, 
it becomes much more about the capabilities needed to support those advanced services. That's why I wanted to highlight and stress once again the importance of the work we have done over the past years to deliver on our reverse merge, which has resulted in 7250IXR and 7750SR running the same SROS image all the way since the second half of 2019. And this effort is now paying off. It has assured feature consistency end-to-end, -end, a faster time to market for new features, especially control plane and management plane features. And it brings all the work we have done around model-driven management and network automation to the IXR as well. Of course, many capabilities are important for 5G IP networks as these advanced use cases become a reality, but software-defined networking control and automation functions definitely top the list. And this is where the reverse uh, merge effort absolutely delivered. But there is more. Uh, new is that we are also extending our portfolio to better address the front hole part of the 5G market with a new family of front hole routers. As shown on the top of the slide, in the classical distributed RAN architecture, radio, uh, radios are co-located with baseband processing units. And thus, backhaul connectivity starts from the cell side, and we typically use one of our IXR e routers there. But some operators have been turning to centralized RAN or CRAN architectures that physically centralize and pool baseband processing in order to achieve uh, TCO savings that result from simplifying the cell side and achieving better baseband processing utilization and to achieve RAN performance gains through increased spectral efficiency. Although not universal, uh, CRAN architectures do factor in uh, at macro cells in an increasing number of service provider networks, especially in North America and in parts of Asia Pacific as well. For such CRAN architectures, from a transport perspective, the industry has been gravitating towards two options. One is front hole uh, or a low layer functional split for 5G with CIPRI or eCIPRI connectivity between a radio unit and the centralized control units. And the other one, which is referred to as mid hole, uh, uses a high layer functional split for 5G. And this is where some of the baseband processing function, the DU, is still distributed and where Ethernet connectivity is used from that distributed DU to a centralized CU. This is an alternative where you trade off RAN performance for a better transport efficiency and latency relaxation. These different architectures, D-RAN with backhaul, C-RAN with fronthaul and C-RAN with midhaul, will often coexist as part of an operator rollout. In fact, uh, we are increasingly seeing such hybrid CRON and DRON use cases where operators will, for instance, keep their existing 4G BBUs at cell sites in a traditional DRON configuration while adding 5G in a CRON architecture to take advantage of centralization gains. This motivates the need for an important extension to our IP mobile transport portfolio, routers that can can, that can combine the well-known uh, mid-hole and back-hole functionality that we have been focused on to date with the ability to efficiently transport CIPRI and eCIPRI front-hole traffic. Now, of course, front-hole transport does add a number of additional requirements to a router like this, uh, things not traditionally seen in a back-hole network. Uh, you need uh, a low latency platform, obviously, and time-sensitive networking support. That is important knowing that uh, the one-way delay budget in front hall is very small, just a mere 100 microseconds. It also introduces the need for advanced synchronization capability. Sync requirements in front hall are more stringent than they are in back hall. You also need a method to carry CIPRI tra uh, traffic over a packet-based infrastructure, obviously. And finally, you need a high capacity system, right? Due to the high bandwidth required by each radio in a front hole design. So you need substantially more capacity than in a traditional DRON cell site router. To address this, we are introducing the SAS24 product. SAS24 is the first of what will become an extended uh, family of front hole routers that combine our IP backhaul functionality with the ability to carry front hole eCIPRI and CIPRI traffic over layer two or segment routing MPLS-based transport. Uh, 
The system provides CIPRI transport using radio over Ethernet, of course, as defined by the IEEE. It supports uh, time-sensitive networking, 802.1cm, as defined by IEEE again, and it obviously complies with the strict latency and sync requirements that you see in front hall. And it is a terabit level system, very high capacity, dense, 10 gig, 25 gig uh, client port, 100 gig uplinks, all fitted in a WAC, uh, one rack unit design. And each port can be flexibly configured to be a backhaul port for with packet and ethernet support, or it can be uh, configured as a CIPRI or an OPSI port for radio over ethernet transport. So in summary, some very important extensions to our 5G transport offering a new family of front hall routers to effectively address front hall transport and those hybrid DRAN, CRAN designs and a compact 5G cell site router to better serve those smaller 5G DRAN sites and of course a higher scale platform for aggregation sites and edge sites uh, ready for 400 gig transport, the 400 gig transport era that we're now entering.